Welcome to the Wise Owl Knits Fibercast. I'm your host, Cheryl Beckrich, and I welcome all of you here today, whether it's your first time or you're a return watcher. Um, I just appreciate you taking the time to watch me and listen to me ramble a bit about all my fibery adventures and my designs. If you like the podcast, please do all the things, like, click, subscribe, comment. Um, that truly helps me get seen by other people. And if you, if you choose to do that, I, I thank you for that. Today I'm wearing my Keeping Time sweater. This is a new design that um, actually will be released on January 2nd. But, just for my listeners and newsletter subscribers, if you go onto my website now, it's on sale for 20% off, and the pattern is up. You, you can get the pattern right now. So, that's just our little secret, so we'll keep that between ourselves. So anyway, the Keeping Time sweater. This one is knit with three different yarns. The background color is Bougie from Knitty McPurley. The green is from, um, is it Westminster Spinners? It's a British company. And the blue is uh, the skeins. So they're all DK weight. Um, you can combine things that you have already. Um, you can do this in, in four colors too. The first version of this had two light colors and two dark colors. This version just has one light color and two darker colors. So it's a pretty adaptable pattern and it's a great pattern for people that are new to color work because you're never working more than two yarns at a time and it has very short floats because it's mostly one stitch in one color, one stitch in the other color. So easy to manage your floats and, and kind of teach yourself how to manage the yarn that's behind to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose. So anyway, the Keeping Time sweater, run over to my website now, which is wiseallknits.com, and uh, save a little money on it. No coupon code necessary, you just put it in your cart, and when you look at the shopping cart, um, I think I'm blurry. Perhaps that's just my eyes. My eyes are, I don't know, going through some changes lately. So anyway, Keeping Time sweater available now at wiseallknits.com for a 20% discount. Again, no coupon code necessary. Just put it in your cart and when you go to check out, the discount will be reflected there. Um, I have a couple of knit alongs coming, along, coming around soon. The first one is for the Solomon Poncho. And uh, that starts the day after Christmas. So the Solomon Poncho actually is also on sale right now on my website. So you can grab both of those at the same time and save 20% on each of them. Um, and that this sale goes on through the 22nd of December. So you have a few more days to get in on that. I've got a Telegram group for the knit along. Also have a hashtag on Instagram, which is SPKAL. Um, and then I lastly have a form that when you finish your project, you can just submit the form and, and that includes a picture. And that's how I'll, I will manage the prizes because of the fact that Instagram is pretty unreliable with their hashtags. So that's why I decided to do the Telegram group um, and then the form for the finished objects so we can determine the prize winners there. It's a really wearable um, garment, great addition to your wardrobe good substitute for a coat. I wear it a lot of times at my office where, you know, I'm cold, other people are hot, um, but it's easy to throw on and off if you need to. 
And if you love cables, it's chock full of cables and just a, a fun pattern to knit and a great garment to have once you're done. So that's the Solomon Poncho Knit Along. Again, that begins the day after Christmas. So grab the pattern, grab some yarn, and get ready to cast on. That goes until, I believe, the end of March because it's a big garment. And I know some of you will get it done way sooner than that, but not everybody will. So that goes till the end of March. Then at the beginning of March, we have the wildflower knit along. And I'll insert a picture of the wild wildflower up here. Um, that pattern is available now in adult sizes, but at the beginning of February, I'm going to release another wildflower pattern for babies, kids, and teens. And uh, so you can knit one for everyone in your family. The girls anyway, the boys might not like it. There will be kits from Mystery Mouse Yarns. This is a preview of one of her kits and I'm gonna knit a sample in this and she'll have two other kits. Those will be out the beginning of February too. And then there will also be bags available from Susan at Delightful Works. And you know, her bags are always fabulous. So it'll be fun to see those and um, love to have you all knit along with us. Lastly, a friend of mine, Amy from Two Sisters and Some Yarn, is uh, running another knit along that begins, I believe it does begin January 1st. It's called Who Done It? And it's a murder mystery knit along. There's a story that goes along and there's clues that will be given out by podcasters um, every week for five weeks. And there, I believe there's a form that you have to submit every week to be eligible for the prizes. So you can do that or you can just knit along and read the story and play along on your own too. Um, you need to go to Amy's Instagram, which is Two Sisters and Some Yarn, and in her profile, in her link tree, there's a link to sign up for that knit along. And I need to do that myself, because I'm sure it's going to be really fun. But watch here for clues. Um, Mystery Mouse will have clues. Sweet Mountain Crafts. Um, I should have brought the paper in here to to tell all of them, Two Sisters and Some Yarn, the Knit Night podcast, which is on Monday nights, Politically Incorrect Knitters, um, and I'm sure there's a few more too, but they're all listed when you sign up for the Knit Along. So join in on that. I think it's going to be really, really fun. And if you're competitive and um, love murder mysteries, this is great place for you. Now on to what I am working on. Mostly I have been making a lot of socks on the circular sock machine. So I have all of them made now, but you see this orange on the toes? That's where I need to Kitchener the toes closed. So I've got, you know, the leg, the heels, the foot and the very end of the foot ends with some waste yarn so that will go away so I've got three pairs for everyone except for my husband he's only got two pair but he was the recipient of several um, of my learning how to use it socks so they're not perfect these aren't perfect either but I've gotten better and better as I go along and I feel like I really have a good handle on the machine now, except I haven't tried the ribber yet. So I'm gonna start that um, at the beginning of the year. I'm gonna just dig in and uh, learn how to do that. I don't know if you've seen, but I put out a series 
of videos on my journey to learn the circular sock machine and I decided I just needed to jump in and do make something every day and I recorded those for 15 days. I intended to do it for 30 but I'm not sure why I decided to, to do that in December when everything is so busy but nonetheless I did. Um, so I did 15 days of it and I'll do another 15 days in January. So I think a lot of that will be ribbing and just trying different techniques that I haven't tried yet. I've mainly been doing these socks the same where I do a mock rib on the leg and a hung hem. So you crank like 30 or 40 rounds and then pull stitches up and put them back on the needle and that gives you a, a double hem that's a little bit sturdier. The mock rib gives some stretch in the, uh, in the leg and that is, I did seven stitches and then took one needle out seven stitches. So it's a seven by one rib. And then the foot is just stockinette. And this one, the toe is sewn up. So that's gonna be my week is Kitchenering, which is you do it from you turn the socks inside out and do it from the wrong side um, They call it the Kitchener, but I think it may be the Finchley graph that Devin um, Ventry um, Showed how to do or demonstrated was the wor word I was looking for demonstrated how to do on her podcast maybe four or five episodes ago but um, whatever you call it, the Finchley or the Kitchener, it comes out the same. It's just mimicking the knit stitch to close that gap. So that is the circular sock machine. What I've been cranking out is lots of socks. So let's say 11 pairs and it takes me about an hour a sock, maybe a little bit less now. The When you're at the sections where you're just cranking, that's really fast, but the heel and the toe and hanging the hem, and even just setting up and getting started for the sock, it's not hard, but it's a little bit more time consuming. So I'm not as quick as I would have thought I might have been, but I, I am to the point now where I can kind of read my knitting like I read my knitting on hand knitting. I can see what the needles are doing and where the weights are and how it is pulling in the right way or the wrong way that might cause me to drop stitches. Um, my problem tends to be user error where I start feeling confident and maybe I'm listening to a podcast and I zone out a little bit and I forget to do something. So I've had some drop stitches and I have gotten very good at picking those up now. Every once in a while it's so bad that I have to just take it off the machine and start again. But that's happening less and less often. So fun with the circular sock machine. The only other thing, well, there's a couple of other things that I'm working on. One is this baby blanket. Oh, I don't want to pull any, oh, I did pull a couple stitches off the needles, but I can get those back easily. So this baby blanket, a little bit bigger than the last time I showed it. Um, it has the same stitch pattern. I'm going to grab these back on here before I make it worse the same stitch pattern as the Solomon Poncho. So that makes that easy. It's got just a uh, seed stitch border and then the Solomon Poncho cable in the middle. I am just loving that cable and every time I, I think, well, I'll try something else, I keep wanting to go back to this one. I, you know, there's other ones like this cable I've used often, but I just really like the way it looks. And um, 
I'll sometimes do variations of it where I maybe shorten or lengthen the space in between all the crosses. But, um, you know, basically the same cable with just some variations in it. Did you see this little angel? Holly from Mystery Mouse Yarns sent this to me. And it's a tassel. And then she brought some pieces of yarn forward to make praying hands and tied or cut some angel wings and attached that to the back. It's adorable. Thank you, Holly. The only other thing that I've been working on um, things are a couple of baby hats that'll be IU hats and those are Christmas gifts so I need to wrap those up pretty quickly too. That is all I have for you today. I don't have a word of the week or, or comments this time but we'll get back in the groove of doing a, a full rotation of all the sections of my website or not sections of my website, but sections of the podcast. And um, hopefully be back on track with that at the first of the year. I want to say Merry Christmas. May you all treasure the birth of our Savior this Christmas season. And enjoy the time with your friends and family. Again, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.